Listeners, readers, welcome to this Fox Page recommendation where I convince you in maybe five minutes whether you should or should not read a given title. This book right here, Nancy Mitford's The Pursuit of Love, is one of those books that is in a category uh, that I call Everyone Should Read It. That's the name of the category. I cannot think of anyone who would not love this book. Um, maybe like super, super macho men. That might be the category of people who don't love this book. Um, it is this incredible distillation. It was published in 1945 by Nancy Mitford, who is one of the famous Mitford sisters, one of whom was a communist, one of whom was a fascist, one of whom was a Nazi, in fact. Uh, but these really fabled and storied bright young things who grew up in England, uh, you know, uh, in the sort of early half of the 20th century. Nancy Mitford is this incredible, incredible novelist who has this mix in this novel right here of amazing pathos. It's really, there's some parts about it that are very sort of deep and very poignant, but it is also hilarious and an amazing distillation of a period of time. Um, it goes all the way from sort of 1911 until the end of the Second World War. And it's just this incredibly delightful uh, send up in some ways of the of the ultra wealthy, but also just this really really sympathetic uh, description of the the sort of life and adventures of of some very strong women. So it's a book that again is is full of pathos, but also full of humor. It's so smart. And there is something unique about the prose. Famously, the Mitford sisters were not educated in any kind of formal way. So Nancy Mitford's prose has a, a very sort of Nancy Mitford feel about it. Um, this is one of the books when I have taught it in uh, former lectures, people, this is a crowd pleaser. I mean, this is one that everybody seems to love. Not only is it an amazing novel, but there is a BBC adaptation of it. It's a three hour long thing with Lily James and with Andrew Scott, who is the sexy priest from uh, Fleabag. So it's, it, and, and it's such a beautiful companion piece to it. So once you read the book, you can indulge yourself in the incredible um, three hour BBC adaptation that is just such a delight. As always, during the recommendation, I'm going to read you the very first line of the book, and then I'm going to read you one other line from later in the text, just to give you a sense of what you, uh, what you might be in for. Okay, chapter one. There is a photograph in existence of Aunt Sadie and her six children sitting around the tea table at Alkenley. The table is situated as it was, is now, and ever shall be, in the hall, in front of a huge open fire of logs. Over the chimney piece, plainly visible in the photograph, hangs an entrenching tool with which, in 1915, Uncle Matthew had whacked to death eight Germans one by one as they crawled out of a dugout. It is still covered with blood and hairs, an object of fascination to us as children. So I am not gonna parse that amazing first sentence. I'm just gonna leave you hanging. Um, I think, honestly, I could spend 90 minutes just talking about that masterful uh, opening sentence, but, but I'm not going to. I am going, in fact, to move on to another line in the book, again, just to give you a sense of, um, of the kind of prose that you will be finding. This portion comes from a part in the book where we are really very aware of the fact that our narrator, who is a cousin of the protagonist, is, uh, is very central and very immediate. This is a very good example of what we call a first person peripheral narrator, otherwise known as like a sidekick narrator. You see it in The Great Gatsby. You see it certainly in mysteries uh, like Sherlock Holmes or some of the Agatha Christie uh, mysteries. So we, this is a, it's, it's this perfect narrative voice because we have this uh, excellent cousin who has a little bit of objectivity, but is also still enough of the family to really feel, uh, you know, like she's right, right on the inside. So here we have um, a little description of a ball that the girls have been waiting, awaiting for many, many moons. This then is a ball. This is life, what we have been waiting for all these years. Here we are and here it is, a ball actually going on now, actually in progress around us. How extraordinary it feels, such unreality, like a dream. But alas, it must be admitted, not a good dream.
So I'm not gonna dig any deeper. Um, I'm just gonna leave it at that. But I will say that this, the Pursuit of Love is just an absolute gem. I think it's um, it's definitely something you should read. And you should check out the, uh, the 90 minute lecture on the Foxed page so you can make sure that you're fully appreciating every word. Happy reading.